five, four, three, two, one. I'm John Miglosh from the Wisconsin DMA and the International Society for Strategic Marketing. Lots of fun stuff today. Let's see how it works out. First, I want to talk about the Country Time Lemonade Stand Stimulus. Okay, well, calling out big business corporate entities that have received pandemic-related government stimulus, Country Time is offering to provide stimulus money to the children who are prevented from selling lemonade by social distance guidelines. <laughs> Get out there and have your lemonade stand, okay? Children under 14 can enter a sweepstakes August 12th to become one of a thousand winners of a hundred dollar Visa prepaid debit card. And let's go over to the video and see what that has to say to us. It's lemonade stand season. Lemonade, lemonade for sale. But this year, things are looking dry. And those small business bailouts are going to not so small corporations, steakhouses, sports teams, oil companies, big guys muscling little guys out of the way. That doesn't seem right. But now, the smallest of small businesses are about to get some help. Country Time introduces the littlest bailout. Stimulus checks to help kids preserve the values of lemonade stands, honest work, and entrepreneurship while putting a little juice back into the economy. So, when life gives you social distancing, make lemonade. Apply. Okay, apply for that at countrytimebailout.com. Okay, so get your kids involved and teach them the benefit of government intervention in the marketplace. Now, they, they also have a stimulus program of, because you can't get a permit without applying, without a permit. You can't run a lemonade stand without a permit. <laughs> Parents of children fined for running a lemonade stand without a permit can get up to $300. Uh, <laughs> Uh, get out of my way, government. Okay, on another note, reduce fat. <laughs> <peanut butter. laughs> I can't even say it straight face. Reduced fat peanut butter and the snack aisles, things like lightly salted Lay's barbecue chips. <laughs> lightly salted Lay's barbecue chips. If you've ever tried those, like eating a piece of odd cardboard. Anyway. <laughs> And uh, a lot of other good stuff that you never wanted is getting taken off the snack shelves and we're getting back to the basics like flour, water, yeast, salt. <laughs> uh, IHOP is cutting its menu down from 12 pages. You ever go and try and figure that menu out? I can't, anyway. Where does Amazon get these great ideas? They're gonna la launch dash carts. And the way they work is that users scan a QR code, remember QR codes, located in the Amazon app that signs them into the cart, and they load the Alexa shopping list. Each cart is equipped with cameras that use computer vision to identify items as they're placed inside the cart and a built-in scale to weigh them as necessary. And as shoppers add and remove items, a display on the front of the cart adjusts the total price better than running it through the cash register to try to decide if you have enough money. Okay, customers ex exit the door via the dash cart lane where they're charged via credit card linked to their Amazon account and email the copy of the receipt. Okay, so what a great idea. The only thing I would add to it, which I always do, is give me a GPS because in spite of the fact that I've been going to the Piggly Wiggly for 40 years, I don't know where the pickles are. Oh, yeah, I know where the pickles are. But I can't ever find the coffee. <laughs> and where's the popcorn salt? You'd think it'd be with the popcorn in the snack aisle. No, it's in the seasoning aisle. Where's the seasoning aisle? I don't know. Anyway, give me a GPS that plots my shopping list through the store and gives me a little ways arrow as I go. That's what we really need. Okay, and now to the meat of this video. Here's a, what a great story. <laughs> it's one of the greatest stories I've seen in a long time. Okay, in 2014, Chef David 
Sorrenti, Serratini, Serratini, advertise a special that would ever change his fate. A one, if you left a one-star review on Yelp, you'd get a 25% off on pizza. It was just a pizza place. But he decided that he was no longer going to be enslaved to the reviews. And it was time to pry the stars from the cold, grubby hands of Yelpers. This is a fascinating story. And it's right up there with, with the uh, shed at Dulwich, which created a fake restaurant. And TripAdvisor ranked it eventually, in about 18 months, not long, as the number one rated restaurant in London. He started at like 25,000th when he, when he launched it with a burner phone. Okay, the guy was born in Italy and had a great restaurant going in, um, in Sausalito, California. Business was booming. Then the recession hit and Sarantini lost everything and thought that was the end of the world. Then he found a little unpretentious uh, hole in the wall that he called it the Bado Bistro. Okay, nice name. And... Uh, so he was an early adopter of Yelp, which was Yelp launched in 2004 with the star rating system. Um, by, by 2009, Yelp boasted 2.26 million visitors per month. So Sarantini, after he opened a couple months, began receiving dozens of calls from Yelp salespeople who implored him to buy ads. When he told them no, he realized that a freshly posted five-star review would have been removed from his page. What's interesting is, if you go look at what reviews Yelp gets about Yelp, and they've only got about a two-point rating on a scale of five. Okay. He said, I came from Italy, and I knew exactly what mafia extortion looks like. Okay. Less than 24 hours, five-star reviews would be removed. And Yelp said, oh, you can still find those. We just don't count them in your overall restaurant rating. When my, when my sister-in-law opened her seamstress shop, uh, she asked people who had had work done, like me and like my daughter, who got her entire wedding dress altered beautifully. Just fantastic job. Fantastic job. Um, we put them up. And I had only gotten some like pants hemmed or something. But my daughter put a big review up, five stars for the wedding dress. And wedding dress is like the target market, prom dresses, those kinds of things. Yelp wouldn't post it. My daughter lived in Minnesota, but she had gotten her wedding dress altered at this shop. And no matter what we did, they posted mine, which is pretty much a fake review. And I've got the same last name as my sister-in-law. Yet Yelp posted mine, but wouldn't post my daughter, who had now a new married name. And, uh, oh my gosh, Yelp is, is the worst. So he said, um, so he created a new alias, Bagalganosh, or something like that. Bagaganosh. Posted 13 fake reviews, positive reviews for the bistro, as well as fi fake critical reviews of neighboring restaurants. <laughs> Sometimes going so far as to develop, disparage fellow owners. And see, this is one of the problems with all these online reviews, is you can write a terrible review about your, your next door competitor, and, you, and they can never face you, you know. So, uh, and here's this thing about, the public Yelp claimed it was all the algorithm. It had nothing to do with us. So he started paying $270 per month to advertise his business. But after six months, he found that the service was useless. Yeah, and part of the reason is you advertise. If you're not really careful, it's advertising you to Bangladesh or someplace where they're never going to stop in. So then in 2014, after turning down another Yelp salesperson, he claimed that four five-star reviews disappeared and three one-star reviews were suddenly catapulted to the top of the page. 
This was the last straw. One of them complained about our waiters and we don't even have waiters. Yelp was completely controlling his reputation. Okay. So he decided to follow in the heels of Edsel Ford Fong, who gained a reputation in the 60s for being the world's rudest waiter. <laughs> and he had a he had uh, facetious Yelp eliters or village idiots, and he would have them put on the wall. Then he put up this sign: "Give us our, give our star, give us one star Yelp reviews, and get fifty percent off any pizza." Hate us on help, on Yelp rather. <laughs> what a great idea! Okay, the first week he put that up, he got so many visitors he had to borrow restaurant he had to borrow pizza dough from neighboring restaurants who probably forgave him for his stuff it was a madhouse okay he got 2300 one star <laughs> reviews okay i got thousands and thousands of letters i got chocolates i got cash checks business owners from all over the country stopped in to thank me then Yelp, <laughs> then Yelp claimed he was exchanging reviews for incentives. Right, he was giving them incentives for one-star reviews, which is a violation, and they were going to pull him off. They were going to suspend access to your listing, or result in a consumer alert being placed on your listing. I think that was really funny. Okay, and now he gives Yelp. Yeah, and, he, and this is interesting, too, is that the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, the Ninth Circuit Court, I can't find the, the highlight here, but uh, the Ninth Circuit Court ruled that, that Yelp, or that, <laughs> that, oh, here it is. In the early days, or days earlier when he put this warning, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals had ruled that Yelp had the right to manipulate reviews and its advertising tactics were a form of hard bargaining, not extortion. That Ninth Circuit is anti-American. Small business owners were furious and they were looking for a vigilante hero. Can you imagine that? We can take a restaurant that has all five-star reviews except one and we can promote the one, block the math, so that you, you're a one-star restaurant even though everybody loves you. This is the world we live in. This is the fake internet. This is why direct mail is so much better than just thinking you can get something for nothing. Okay. So now he does $3,000 cooking classes and events. $3,000 per person, I guess. And he's, he's the, the, the chef that, hate, that beat Yelp. I'd rather sit alone in my restaurant than get business from Yelpers. Sometimes he even renames his restaurant the worst Chinese food in the world on Yelp. Okay, and the point is, get creative. Do something different. Think about what you really want in life, or in this case, in your promotion, and go for it. I'm John Miglosh. Like and share. Your friends will think you're smart. Have a great day. Bye-bye.